I love how you can see the dead, <laughs> the dead little vine over here. I swear to God, I'm gonna get rid of it at some point. I'm just being lazy. Okay, so in the month of November, I read 11 books. So let's get talking about them, I guess. The first book I read in November was Babel by R. F. Kwong. This book follows a young boy named Robin Swift who lives in China but then his mother dies and a wealthy English professor comes and takes him back to England. He ends up getting into the Oxford school. I don't know why I said it like that. He ends up getting into Oxford and he's in this special like language track and part of the reason that track is so special is because in this world there is a silver based magic system that also has to do with language. So essentially they can like carve certain words into the silver and it makes it do something <laughs> depending on what words were inscribed. However, fairly all early on in his days in Oxford, he finds this group of people that's like a secret society that is actually stealing silver bars from the school in order to redistribute them to other cause they deem more worthy. This book talks a lot about imperialism, colonialism, racism, sexism, basically all the isms. Um, I heard some people saying that they thought it was like too heavy handed in that respect, but to be honest I appreciated it a lot. It felt really refreshing to read a book where I'm agreeing with everything that's being said, <laughs> even if it is like a little bit heavy handed in some instances. I also really liked learning about language. There's a lot in here on that. I just thought it was very interesting because I've never studied that before. I ended up giving this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it definitely. The next book I read is Woman Talking by Miriam Toes. I think that's how you say your last name. I'm so sorry. But this book essentially follows eight Mennonite women who have secret meetings in a barn. The reason that they're having secret meetings is because for two years they were visited by these demons that would attack them in their sleep. And then they realized that those demons were actually the men of their community who were drugging them and then raping them in their sleep. So I thought that was really interesting, but it doesn't actually talk about the assaults that much. It's kind of just these women meeting up afterwards to discuss whether they should stay in their community or whether they should flee and try to find somewhere else to live, even though none of them can read or write or know of anywhere else to go, really. I found several things about this book to be interesting choices. <laughs> like, first of all, this is dealing with these women who have been violated. But the way that they talk about it is very clinical in a sense. And like obviously that would, that's an awful, terrible thing to happen to someone, but they never really delve into that that much. They kind of just talk about it very blasé. Um, I also thought it was interesting that the book follows the perspective of a man who's sitting in on these meetings, which is an interesting choice given that these women would be perfectly capable of being their own narrators. But most of all, it was just boring. I I heard afterwards that there's a lot in here about like Plato and like ancient philosophy and stuff that's brought up, but I don't know any of that. So personally the book was just kind of boring to me. Um, I did manage to finish it in like a day or two so it wasn't that bad, but I don't think this is going to make it out to my favorite books of the year. I only gave it two stars and honestly like I wouldn't recommend it. But apparently there's a movie or something coming out based on that so maybe that will be more interesting. The next book I read is The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. This is the first book of a sequel series to the A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. And essentially if you don't know the A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy follows four different worlds that are each connected by London. Um, so there's like Red London, White London, Grey London, and Black London. And there are certain people called Antari that can travel between these worlds. However, Black London became so corrupt that they had to like put up walls in between these worlds so that only Antari can travel between them. And as a result of this, Grey London no longer has any magic. It's like the regular London that we imagine. Red London is full of magic and White London is losing its magic. So I can't really go on to what happens in this book specifically because it all depends on whether you've read that first series. And a lot of the characters from that first series actually make an appearance in this book which I was very happy about. It was so nice to read from their perspectives again. And all in all I really enjoyed this. I give it four stars. I am so excited for the next one to come out, which I hope is coming out next year. I'm praying it's coming out next year. And then this book honestly put me in like a huge fantasy mood, so you will see that theme in the next few books. <laughs> the next book I read is Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. Yep, that's it. I don't know why I got confused. By Brandon Sanderson. This book, ugh. So it follows these two different characters. You can probably tell by what I'm, my emotions how I felt about this. It follows two main characters. One is Yumi and the other likes to go by Painter. 
in Painter's World there are these nightmares that come to life and his job is to paint them into something else which takes away their power. And in Yumi's world she's seen as this religious sacred figure so her every day is determined by a ritual and her job is to stack stones so that she can communicate with the spirits and get them to help out people in the towns that she visits. I've got some thoughts on this one. First of all, it was written in like a humorous way which I just do not think fit this book. Um, what's the other book? It's right here. The other secret project, The Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England, this one, like, the humorous tone worked because it's just kind of a light-hearted, less intense read. For this one, I it just did not work and it just kind of grated on me because it seemed like it was supposed to be like a more serious type of book, but then there's all this annoying humor that I didn't really vibe with. So I'm not really understanding why so many people have said that this is their favorite secret project because this is definitely my least favorite so far and probably will end up being my least favorite of the bunch. I also felt like the pacing was off, like nothing happened for the vast majority of this book and then all of a sudden at the end everything happened in a very short amount of time too so it just made the book really boring. And then lastly there's supposed to be like a romance element to this but the romance just didn't make sense to me because it's like there's no kindling of that at all and then all of a sudden oh my god they're in love. No I didn't get I didn't like it. I only gave this book two stars. I'm gonna keep it just because it's a secret project and it's so pretty but I don't think I'm ever going to read this again. After that, I picked up Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Yes, I did read this book. It was just so popular and my roommate like gifted me her version of it so I was able to read it without paying for it, which was amazing. But if you don't know, which I don't know how you wouldn't because this book is so freaking popular, but if you don't know, but this book follows her main character, Violet, who in the beginning of the novel is set to join a military academy. For her whole life she's been training to join the scribes, but at the last second her mother, who is the commanding general of the army, tells her that no, she's going to be joining the Dragon Riders division, which is like the most deadly division of all. Plus she has the advantage of so many people in the academy wanting to kill her, one because she's small and they don't think she'll be fit for a rider, and two because years and years ago there was like a revolution and it was stamped down. But the kids of the, the people who tried to revolt have all been constricted to join the military academy in the Dragon's Division to see if they can survive. Um, and the main character that we talk about is named Zayden, whose father is actually the leader of the rebellion. So he wants to kill her. Or does he? We don't know. <laughs> Overall, like, I thought this book read like a Sarah J Mass book. Like, not super well written, but just so entertaining. Like I sat down one day to read this and all of a sudden I had read 500 pages without noticing. It was crazy. So it's like really accessible, really entertaining and easy to get into. I will say it's like a little bit clunky with some of the exposition, like to concentrate during the these like feats she has to do for to get into the Dragon Riders community. She like spills off random facts which is like really weird. I don't understand that as like a method of exposition, but whatever. It's also not all that original like magic school, dragons, revolution, we've heard it all before. But at the end of the day, I just like it. I don't, I'm not gonna rate it like a four or five, but I'll, I'll give it three stars. And then directly after that, I had to pick up the sequel, Iron Flame, <laughs> by the same author, obviously. So I'm not gonna really describe the plot of this one because obviously that would be spoilers for the first one if you haven't read it. But I will say, this one wasn't quite as entertaining as the first one, like it lagged in some points, but it was still fun, and I gave this one three stars as well. Then I was still on a fantasy kick, so I picked up The Dark Mirror by Juliette Morellier. This book, oh my god. <laughs> so Juliette Morellier is like one of my favorite authors, she wrote one of my favorite books of all time. I usually love her stuff. It's all very like fairy tale based and it just has this like beautifulness to it. I don't know, that didn't make any sense, we'll, we'll just keep going. But this book, my god. This book follows a main character whose name is like Bridie or something and he goes at a very young age to join this druid who teaches him stuff about being a leader because they're trying to like get him to take over the kingship once the current king dies. But then one night when he's still young he finds a baby at the door outside, so like a chainling. Is that how you say it? I think so. And he decides to take her in as a sister. And that creates all sorts of issues. The druid hates her, they're all suspicious of her, it's like a whole big thing. However, absolutely 
nothing happens in this book. It was so boring. <laughs> like, I was skimming at the 100 page mark. And this book has how many pages? There's 500 pages. There are 400 pages of this that I was just skimming as fast as I could to get through it. And I wanted to like it because I even have a sequel on my shelf. And I was really excited about this. But it was just god awful. Just so boring. And then at the end, this is like, is kind of a spoiler. But I don't think anyone's going to read this book. So just... When I put down this book, you're safe. Towards the end, like, all of a sudden, these two people who grew up as siblings are in love? And we're not supposed to think that's weird? Like, that's so fucking weird. So yeah, I gave this book one star. Would not recommend it, ever. After that, I picked up Blood Rite by Barbara Ehrenreich. This is essentially what this says at the bottom right here. Origins and history of the passions of war. That's basically all it talks about. I went into this, like, hoping it would be really informative. I'd learn a lot. And honestly, the whole time, I just kept thinking, like, this is all made up. <laughs> Which I, I guess like most sociological books or like theories are, but this one just felt so made up as I was reading it. I just couldn't get into it no matter how hard I tried. I gave it two stars. I like should have given it one, but I feel like it's partially my fault that I didn't enjoy it. So I wanted to be a bit more fair, so I gave it two. Wouldn't recommend. I didn't have much fun with this one. And then the last three books I actually read for an upcoming video, which I don't know when it will be out, but it will be out at some point. So I'll share what they're about in my writing, but I'm not going to give out any other information, just so you can watch that video if you want to find out my thoughts. The first of those three books is If We Were Villains by Emma Rio. In the beginning of this book, you find out that your main character is in jail, but you don't know why. And then what follows is the story of these seven theater kids, basically, who go to this exclusive school, and they all do Shakespearean plays, and then one day a crime is committed, and you're basically spending the whole book figuring out how that happened. Really, really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. After that, I picked up The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. This book follows six people who are invited to join this like secret society, but they're told from the beginning that only five of them can last more than a year. Not much happens in this book, but I really liked it. I gave it four stars. And the last book I read in November is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This book follows our main character who's in this like school of man's school. Um, which is a school for people with magic powers, but it's a very, very deadly school. Like, at every corner, something's trying to kill you. <laughs> and in the beginning of the book, she's saved from the monster by this boy named Orion, and she proceeds to just hate him for saving her. And that's how the book starts, and that's most of the book, honestly. I didn't like this one. I gave it two stars, because something at the end made me like, ooh, maybe I do like this a little bit more, but honestly, it was probably like, 1.5 stars. I didn't enjoy it very much. So those are all the books I read in November and I figured I'd share the book I'm currently reading to give you an idea. I'm reading The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I'm only 30 pages in so I cannot give you a description because so far this book has been like a fever dream. But I'm looking forward to finishing it. So there you go. Those are all the books I read in November. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Goodbye.